In this video, we'll talk about yeast, a teeny tiny fungus that has been helping humans for thousands of years. In fact, yeast is a unicellular fungus. That means each yeast is just one microscopic cell. But don't be fooled by its size. It's powerful enough to make bread rice and produce wine and other forms of alcohol. But before we get into that, let's do a simple fun experiment. So here we have some yeast, some sugar, some warm water, a bottle, some balloons and a spoon. First, I'm going to dissolve this sugar with some warm water. Add this yeast to the sugar solution and let it rest for a while. Next, I'm going to take a funnel and pour this yeast mixture into the bottle. Finally, we are going to fit a balloon to the mouth of this bottle and see what happens. After some time, we see that the balloon has inflated. What do you think made the balloon inflate? The answer is yeast. Yeast fed on sugar broke it down into glucose. And this glucose was further broken down in the process of anaerobic respiration to produce carbon dioxide alongside a small amount of ethanol. And this carbon dioxide filled the balloon and inflated it. And this process is what we call as fermentation. Fermentation is when yeast breaks down sugar anaerobically, producing carbon dioxide and ethanol. And this process is the secret behind bread rising in the oven and grape juice turning into wine. First, let's try and understand why bread rises when it bakes. Bread dough starts with wheat flour, which is packed with starch. Now, when we add yeast along with some warm water, yeast feeds on the starch and breaks it down into sugars. These sugars are then used up in the process of fermentation, releasing carbon dioxide along with a bit of ethanol. And this carbon dioxide gets trapped in the stretchy dough, puffing it up. And that's why pizza dough is left to rest for hours before baking. Because the yeast needs time to pump out enough gas to really fluff up the dough. Now let's send this dough into the oven. At first the oven is hot but not too hot. The yeast isn't killed right away. In fact, it gets super active. The warmth pushes the yeast into an overdrive. And it multiplies by a cool method called budding, which we'll talk about later. More yeast means more carbon dioxide. And meanwhile, the gas bubbles already in the dough, they expand as they heat up. That adds to the rise even more. Eventually, the temperature inside the oven climbs so high that the yeast can't survive anymore. But by then, mission is accomplished. And we have the gorgeous airy bread that we love to eat. Now, when we slice open a baked bread, we see these tiny holes inside, right? Those are the spaces where carbon dioxide was trapped, giving bread its soft and spongy texture. And the alcohol? All of the alcohol formed evaporates in the heat of the oven. And that's why bread is never ever alcoholic. Now, let's look at the second use of yeast, which is in the brewing industry. Here, the goal is different. We want to keep the alcohol made by the yeast. So when we use yeast to ferment grape juice, we get wine. Fermentation of sugarcane or molasses, with that we get other alcoholic drinks. Now remember how we mentioned yeast multiplying quickly in the bread dough by budding? Do you know what budding is? It is a method of asexual reproduction that we see in yeast among many other organisms. In budding, a small growth forms on the parent cell which is called as the bud. The bud grows and develops its own nucleus and cell parts. Eventually, the bud separates and becomes a brand new yeast cell. So to sum up everything that we learned, yeast is a unicellular fungus. Through fermentation, it turns sugar into carbon dioxide and ethanol. In bread making, carbon dioxide makes the dough rise. In brewing, ethanol becomes the product. And yeast reproduces through budding.